Hi, and welcome to the Partner Playbook. Um, my name is Tanya Gentry. I'm the Chief Sales Officer for Big Red Media MSP Success. And today I have the privilege of speaking with Jason Beal, Vice President of Worldwide Partner Ecosystems with Barracuda, about their partner program and some tips on how MSPs can be successful with them. So thank you, Jason. Welcome. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So let's get right into it. For those that are listening who may be unfamiliar with Barracuda or you know, may haven't seen it for a few years, tell me a little bit about your company. So Barracuda has been a channel loyal, channel centric company for 20 years. Uh, at the heart of our culture is what we call partner empathy, right? Putting ourselves in our partner's shoes, seeing the world through their eyes, and then really building win win based upon their brand, their go-to-market, their MSP solutions, right? We want to be an ingredient in the cakes that our partners are selling and then support their needs with all of their different clients. From a technology perspective, Barracuda is a cybersecurity platform, primarily targeting the uh, small to medium-sized enterprise, uh, both private and public sector institutions. Great. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's talk about your partner program. What are some key benefits and features of your program? Well, we've architected the Barracuda Partner Success Program around customer success or customer lifecycle management. We understand how critical that the partners are in what we have coined a shared success model, helping the end customers from the time that we're doing initial interest and demand generation and landing those customers to driving adoption through partner services, and then expanding the footprint with those end customers, and then ensuring that we renew or retain those customers for life. So the partner program is architected and has benefits, has financial compensation, all around that layer model, and helping uh, our partners really monetize and protect their customers for life. Right. Um, will you be making any enhancements to the program this year or, or coming up into maybe 2025? We will, Tanya. So we launched the Global Partner Program on December 5th, 2023. We already did a phase two iteration in the first week of March, and we have phase three already in the works, already planned for launch in the first week of September. That phase will have a lot of focus around partner technical enablement, we, we just hear more and more from our partners, our partner advisory boards, our MSP partner advisory council, that they want more tactical enablement with uh, their own businesses internally, understanding that platform story and how they can help their end customers. So heavy focus around tactical enablement with our partners. That's really cool. Uh, when you guys are, are going to market and you're looking for MSP partners, what do you look for in an in a MSP? Well, you know, our philosophy, my personal philosophy in channel management has always been quality of partnerships over quantity, right? We want to invest and commit to partners who are invested and committed to us. And that's how you can really generate a win-win, right? This isn't just a numbers game, you know, globally of how many partners you can sign up, but it's how much mind share do you have with one another? How, how committed are you to building out plans, you know, to making each other a part of your go-to-market solution. So this is what we look for in a in a partnership. Now, again, I always say we need to win the hearts and minds of our partner engineers first, right? We need to have the CTOs, the VP services, VP of technology at the partners really get their hands on, beat up our technology and really believe that we are the best cybersecurity provider for that SME environment. If we can do that, then we know there'll be many other opportunities together. So that's what we look for. We look for partners that are committed, that want to bring our solutions to market, but that truly believe in the strength of our technology is providing cyber defense across all of these threat vectors, email and web and network and cloud. It's not easy. Yeah. So to dovetail on that a little bit, what are some of the ways that a partner, if I become a partner, how can I be successful with you? It starts with offering choice to the modern buyer, right? Today's modern buyer have so many different needs and preferences for how they want to procure and consume and manage technologies, right? As you know, Tanya, some end customers, one day they, they might want to buy uh, and manage the technology themselves and manage the licenses. They, they may want a managed service or a co-managed model. They may want to buy 
from the cloud or off the cloud marketplaces, right? The needs and the preferences change for buyers of many different shapes and sizes in private and public sector. That means that the partners need to be able to provide choice, right? We talk a lot about partner agility, right? Being agile to meet these needs of the end customers and to become hybrid, right? The more that partners can become hybrid partners, offer a project or resale model with professional services, offer managed services or co-managed models, or offer to help them from the cloud and through the cloud marketplaces is where partners are going to be successful. At Barracuda, we have technology, technology form factors, we have programs, we have go-to-market options to help our partners bring our technology to the end customers in the way that those end customers want to procure, consume, and manage those technologies. That makes for successful Barracuda partners. That's great. Um, I know feedback is important to Barracuda, and especially you. What are some of the things that you've been hearing lately from um, your partners that's on their minds? Boy, there's there's three common themes that I hear when I travel and talk to partners all around the world. Right, I'm I'm a good listener. I ask questions. That's how we form our our strategy and our programs is voice of partner. Whether it's kind of informally in meetings or formally from our advisory boards around the world. But there's really three things that I'm hearing a lot right now. The vendor consolidation or the the platformization is a real trend. Right, there was a time in January and February at the start of the new year that. Eight out of 11 partners that I met with were all saying, we're reducing the number of vendors and tools that we're working. We're going to well, work with a, a subset of 10 to 12 strategic vendors. They just simply don't have the resources, the time, the effort to have so many different vendors in their portfolio. And that's applicable in the end user environment as well. So vendor consolidation or vendor rationalization is absolutely a trend that I'm seeing, like we've talked about it in the industry for years, I'm mm-hmm. seeing it this year with partners. Second is this, uh, the pressure that partners at MSPs feel. It's a reason why they're all enhancing and upgrading their security capabilities and security competencies because hackers are democratizing their attacks into the SMB. We hear that yeah. there's a ton of pressure on our partners to provide cyber defense or to help their end customers to either know or to respond to attacks. And they feel that pressure. They have a duty. We have a duty in the industry, right, to help our end customers, but certainly the volume of attacks and the democratization of attacks and SMB is another key trend that I'm seeing and hearing. And then finally, cyber insurance. There too, the partners are feeling a bit of a of a burden, right? Their end customers are bringing these forms, these checklists, this paperwork to the partner saying, fill this out, right? Help me. I don't know what I'm doing here. I can't get a cyber insurance policy underwritten until I fill out these forms and tick these boxes. And a lot of, again, a lot of that responsibility is falling on the shoulders of our partners. That's that's so true. We hear a lot of that and that's crazy. Um, you know, last question, can you share anything that's coming down your roadmap? So I mentioned earlier, we, we do have the uh, new partner program phase three coming in September yeah. with a lot of um, uh, tactical enablement. What I will give as a sneak peek is we think communities are important. We certainly recognize partners at our preferred and our premier and our authorized levels. But how do you recognize How do you reward? How do you provide special access to the individual SEs and the individual technical team members at the partners? So we're going to, uh, let's just say we're going to bring something in our partner roadmap that is a sense of community and that can really recognize and reward and provide special access to the individuals who work at our partners. That sounds very exciting. I think that that'll be great for them. So, well, thank you, Jason, um, for spending a few minutes with me. And thank you for all the MSPs that are watching this, um, this clip of the the uh, partner playbook. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Thanks again for having me.